Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop here. Welcome. If you're just joining us, we make stuff. I do fabricating. Mitch behind the camera. He takes care of the film duties. It's kind of a, a special day today, and I'll explain why. This is our 100th episode. Yes, we've been doing this almost two years now. So, 100 videos. It's my birthday. I turned 67 today when the video comes out. So that means that I made my first bike when I was 12. I have been making things out of metal for 55 years. Woohoo! We're going to work on Aramaki today. This is the outer clutch plate, I think you call this. The springs go in here. And it's made out of steel. It's actually made out of three pieces of steel. And I have a piece of aluminum here. I'm going to try and make one. We'll see what happens. This is made out of three pieces. This is, uh, it's pressed or stamped out. Can you see the welds? There's an extra plate that's on there. That's got the splines. That's going to be one of the tricky things that we have to do today. And then there's a, a third piece there that holds the thread. And you can see there's also four, I guess, spot welds. I've got a holder here and this holds a tool bit. I took out this tool bit. This is what I used when I cut the splines in a shifter shaft. Can you see how that fits right in there? That's, a, that's what cuts those splines. So now I'm going to have to cut these splines. So last night it was almost dark. I was outside grinding. Okay, this is the best fit. This is a, a stamping as well. So these aren't exactly uniform, but can you see how that fits right into there? We're going to use the milling machine. I'm going to use an end mill first. And then can you see how, how the tool, that's, that's the cut. Can you see how it's cut at an angle? Because if you have it flat, that's a lot more force that has to has to take away the metal. That's why I I ground it at an angle. So first thing we're gonna do is go to the lathe and we're gonna machine out the pocket. And I don't really have a proper tool. I'm gonna improvise with a tool I use for the mill, and it has to cut in like that. So that's the first thing to do is to make this shape here and make an eight mil thread, eight by 1.25. Let's go do some turning on the lathe, okay? I got my jaws reversed. Can you see that? It's gonna hold, because if I, if I have, have the jaws on the regular way, it won't open up large enough. So it's kind of that in-between size. I don't get to use these, I have to use these. So I have to be careful because these are overhanging. I got these spaces here. I'm gonna put the spaces in there, space it out a little bit because I gotta machine the outside. I've never made one of these before and I think it's a little bit of a tricky job, but I'm game, so we'll see what happens. So I'm putting these spaces in and then I'm going to take them out when I, I make the vise tight because otherwise they could flip out and maybe even hit me. There we go. So that's held in there like that. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is to drill and tap the 8 millimeter hole. And if I make a mark like there, I'm 
I can go up to that red felt pen line and I know I still have metal that has to come out. So what I have to do now is to hollow this out. <laughs> zero when I come in like that that's as far in as I can go I took off the burr when it was slowing down because if you do it at full speed sometimes it gets a little bit of a chatter so just a small tip. I got this off the mill this is part this is what goes into the boring bar spins around but it's hard to find a tool bit that's going to cut inside here. So I've hollowed it out somewhat and I think what I want to do now is to, is to change tools and, and get a tool that goes into the back and then I can face along there. I'm going to make this, this doesn't have to stick out as much. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to machine off maybe a quarter inch of this. So I got a few little lines in there, but this is the inside, so you don't see it. See how it's it's spring loaded? I can set it and then bring it out and then measure. That's a lot wider than what the spline is, so that's fine. Okay, we're going to leave that. So what I need to do now, while it's held in the chuck here. I'm going to machine the OD up to the chuck. I won't hit the chuck jaw. I'll try very hard. <laughs> So far so good. Okay, we'll take this out. Do you see what's going on here? This is the same size. And now we have to take off some weight here. Okay, let's do some milling now. About time. I have my tool for broaching a spline like that. But can you see here I've got a quarter inch end mill. Can you see how the quarter inch end mill fits in there really nicely? So the first step 
is to go around and use the quarter inch end mill and cut it out and then this this brooch will have much less work to do because most of it will will have been taken out by the quarter inch end mill so I'm just setting up here now every 12 degrees we have to make a cut because we got 30 splines so 30 goes into 360 12 times. What I want you to see is there's, it, it's not a really tight fit. Can you see there's a little bit of slop there? And you have to have that. You have to have a little bit of play there. So that's what we're going for. A little bit of play. This is the clutch hub. And this helps to hold the plate. See those marks there? That's the heat treating. So this outside where the splines are, that's very hard. And then inside from where the marks of heat are, that should be a little bit softer. So of course I need to drill five holes sometime. So what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm, I'm lining up the cutter with the hole. And this is going to be the first one. So I make a line there. And I should put some oil in, oil all around there. And this is basically what I'm doing. I'm going to make a cut. Okay, see it cutting now? There, take a cut. It took a cut. So maybe we'll go a little bit more. There we go. That's, a, that's taking a cut. One, two, three. It's pretty easy having it at three revolutions. I've done some where it's a really odd number. The tool seems to be working quite well. I'd say not bad for a bench grinder and a pair of vice grips. That's how the tool happened. Oh, look at that. It does go down. And there's a little bit of slop. So we're good. One, Wow, one pass and we're good. That puts a smile on my face, that's for sure. Okay, so what's left is the holes. And I haven't figured out how to do the holes. And why I'm telling you that is because these holes don't go just anywhere. See how the, how the screws for the clutch spring holders? If I move it one, so it's every, every six, every six. So I haven't figured out how to locate that yet. So we might do that another day, I think, because we've got some other stuff to do. But why don't we go weigh this? Do you want to see how much this weighs? No holes. Let's go to the weighing scale. So here's the stock plate made out of steel. And it's 320 grams, well, 
So let's say 321. And then this one, it doesn't have the holes in it yet, so we'll save a little bit more weight there. 321. Oh, 201. So we saved 120 grams. 120 grams, that's like four, four ounces. Yeah, something like that. Nice. It's been great having you hang out in our shop here. So this was, this was fun and the weight savings was substantial. Thank you for buying us coffees. We appreciate that very much. It helps to fuel our channel. Next week, we'll do something else on the Tiger Cub, the Aramaki, I don't know. We'll see you next week. Have a good week.